Hi, this is the Bet Central podcast. Let's make some profit. Hello and welcome to the Bet Central podcast powered by Bet Coza. I'm your host, Mitch McKenna, back again for yet another week of previewing the Premier League. Uh, joined by Grant as always. I think Grant is one place to start and football kicks off this Friday. Spurs taking on Palace. Of course, Spurs still on top of the league with a massive result against Fulham. Um, a 2-0 victory over there. Palace, they, I mean, yeah, they got thrum- they got thrashed by Newcastle 4-0. Looking at this one, I think it's still going to be tough to, to you know, lean over to Palace as well. Judging by the way uh, Spurs are playing, but saw he went off with an injury, so we might see um, an interesting midfield, and we'll see if they get if Spurs really get tested there. Mm. Yeah, I, th- I think Saw was, was sick. So what I gather is you'll hopefully shake off that illness and be fit to play. And then you know, Basuma we mentioned pre-game last time out that he was suspended. I think he's back because it was a, it was two yellows, so he should have a one-game ban and he should be back to back to play alongside Saw in there. So, and yeah. I mean, if you look at the, the form of the two teams, Palace are like on a downward trend. They've got one win in the last six. Fair enough, that was at uh, Man United. But generally, they've been struggling. That, that Newcastle game, I thought, I thought it would be quite tight. Maybe like 1-0 Newcastle. And it was a thumping. Yeah. And from what I saw of that game, I mean, Palace really were missing their, their pacey players. You know, is it injured or at least injured? And then even someone like Jeffrey Schlupp, who can carry the ball on the counter, was out. So they were very, very one paced. you know, Mateta and Edouard and... And IU, there wasn't much like counter threat to actually hurt Newcastle. It was very pedestrian sort of performance. And I mean, most the, those guys aren't back for Palace, so that the team's still quite stretched. The squad's, the squad's small. Um, yeah, you know, Matez Franca, the Brazilian forward, made his debut in that game. I doubt he's going to play, but he, you know, at least he gives some options in attack with all these with all these knocks and absentees. But I mean, Spurs are in great form. Yeah. Um, that Fulham game was pretty. Straightforward. I mean, I look try to look at the XG of the game, and then I realized that actually Fulham's shots, a lot of their shots in the XG in the game were in the last, like after the eighty third minute, they had a lot of shots. But before that, in the first yeah. eighty three minutes of the game, Spurs only gave Fulham zero point one seven XG, which just shows they, you know, they gave up almost nothing. And yeah, that's just a really good performance. They're good at controlling games. They've got a nice sort of bunch of forwards, even with you know with Solomon injured at the moment. You know, you still got Richarlison. Um, and you've got Brendan Johnson on the bench. So they've got some decent depth. I mean, I struggle to look past Spurs winning the game. You know, they've, they've scored two plus goals in nine of their last 10 games. They've won seven of their last eight. And they've won three, they lost three games against Palace. So, I mean, everything points yeah. towards the Tulsa and win. And, I mean, if they win this game, then they, they, play, um, they play Chelsea in the following round um, at home. So if they can win these next two games, I mean, it's hard to start, you know, start discounting them as having a vague chance of a title challenge long term, which would be funny with Kane leaving to try and win the league um, at Bayern. If, if Spurs somehow win the league this year and Kane yeah. isn't part of that, it would be crazy. But anyway, I, th- I think I'd back Spurs to win this game. 1.83 is, is decent enough odds considering their form. And if you look at Palace as well, they, they've only scored once in the last five games in the league. So, um, sorry, in all competitions. So a clean sheet for Spurs in a win is 3.2. I mean, that's seriously good odds. Um like I suppose another 2 0 win or something could be on the cards. And even Son to score any time at two point two is pretty good considering he's pretty free, you know, free scoring at the moment and his team's so attacking. I suppose aren't gonna take their foot off the gas too much yeah. as the game goes on. So yeah, I think there's there's three pretty there's three bets there, you know, a safer bet with a straight win, a high value one with uh, a win to zero, and then Son to scores if you're just a bit concerned about Fuller maybe nicking a point. So yeah, I mean it's it's obvious. There's nothing pretty, you know, that insightful about backing Spurs, but that's probably how I'm going to go for this one. Now let's move on over to Saturday. Chelsea play host to Brentford. I think you'll be proud of the first half performance your team put out against Arsenal. Second half, we won't talk about that, but against a Brentford team with a massive win against Burnley over the weekend, um, Remok stepping up and of course showing out. But it hasn't been a great season for Brentford. I think they've struggled in recent times. You know, the last time they drew, I mean, they lost to Manchester United 2-1. The game before that, they drew to Forest 1-1. I, I, to be honest with you, I am backing your Blues in this game. I think it could be, you know, I think, yeah, it could be both teams to score, I, I can feel. 
but I think Chelsea will definitely get the win. Yeah, look, I hope so, because the team's definitely playing a lot better. I think maybe even the first hour against Arsenal was pretty good, at least in control in the second half. I mean, it was kind of, yes. it looked like it was petering out to just like a straightforward win. And then there's that error from Sanchez and that great finish from Rice. And then the subs really didn't help in that game, just invited pressure once Sterling and Palmer were taken off. Um, Madueke really struggling on the, on the left side. He's just not comfortable there, even though he's a left footer. He's, he's much better coming inside on the roof, on the right wing. And Reese James obviously coming on as like a, a wide midfielder, um, just invited pressure, which is a pity because the performance probably just just about deserved a win um, over the full game, and three wins yeah. in a row before that in all competitions. Um, so things are looking a lot better. Uh, the squads are getting you know a bit sort of swollen with a lot of players coming back from from injuries. <clears throat> Buddy Shile is back now. You know um, Jet Reese James, Malagusta back from a ban. Um, so things are looking a lot, there's a lot more depth and Cole Palmer looking a really nice signing whether he's playing on the right or as a 10 or as a false nine, he's, he's been pretty good in all of those roles. So things are looking better for Chelsea, but the, they have lost, they lost two games to Sanford Bridge to Brentford. Um, Brentford with their back five can cause a lot of frustration for the, the sort of the big seven because they play that back five against Newcastle now as well. And um, they win was they, you know they win last week out was really impressive. I mean they th- absolutely destroyed Burnley. I mean a three 0 win, but twenty three shots, three point two four xG. And I look back as well as they they, they won one draw against Forest. That game they had eighteen shots and created a fair few chances. And they weren't actually yeah. far off beating United. They were one up going to add a time and a bit of a goalkeeping error. So yeah, maybe they've deserved they probably deserve more than the four points they have in the last uh, three games. They could yeah. have maybe five or six. Um, so yeah, maybe he's doing a good job, Thomas Frank, to sort of cover some of the injuries, and you know even lost him out. You know, um, Hickey was suspended left back, so it was Jan out at left back with the with the back four and Mopé playing on sort of like a left winger, left sided forward. I'm sure this game they go to back five and they make it tough for Chelsea. So yeah, it feels like the the first goal could be pretty key. Um, I try to look at the like the goals markets. You know, both teams to score makes sense, but then I looked at Brentford's last nine away games and they've. You know, nice uh, sort of six of those have only had one team on target. Yeah. So maybe the first team to score will win this game. Um, so, I mean, some bets I looked at, the first half to finish level, so just a draw at half time is 2.2. It might take a while for Chelsea to break the bees down. And uh, yeah. value bet, Chelsea to win by one goal exactly at 3.5. Um, yeah, that doesn't always come off that market, exactly one goal, but I think that's pretty tasty as well. So... Yeah, there's a few odds there that might be worth looking at. Um, hopefully a win and then Chelsea play <clears throat> Spurs the following week. So they need to go into that with some points on the board and some confidence. Uh, so let's move on over to Bournemouth. They'll be playing Burnley. I think good news for some Africans out there. Lyle Foster just extended his contract with Burnley this past week. So that's good news seeing that he's going to be staying at Turf Moor for another five years. But it is a bottom-of-the-table clash. Uh Burnley need three points just to get out the drop zone. I mean, they're going to be eyeing the fixtures that Luton and Everton have. Uh, and for Bournemouth, again, lots of struggles. They just sacked the managers. So the possible new uh, manager bounce might be in effect against Burnley. I mean, we all still look back and we think, mm. uh, yeah, the Gary O'Neill sacking is still a weird one to me. But nonetheless, I mean, they need three points. Yeah, it's a massive game for for these for both teams. I mean, Bournemouth have been in free fall for quite a long time this season. You know, no no wins in the league. Um, yes, yeah. they've had some decent performances of late, but you know, thrashed four 0 by Arsenal, thrashed three 0 at Everton. Um, they you know lost to Mud beaten at home by Wolves, um, who had a good you know had a very good plan. Um, Gary Neal was on Monday Night Football and Sky Sports explaining how they sort of plan to expose his former team, and they scored one goal from exactly what he trained. Um, even though it needed a late goal from, you know, um, a Kalazic who came on and scored, I think he's got two winners now sort of in the last few minutes of games this season in the league. He has yeah. Bournemouth had 10 men for the final half hour, but still it was um, a good win for Wolves. And Bournemouth, you are very worried about, and I'm worried about Burnley because they were so poor in that game. Um, you know, the last match they played against Brentford conceded so many chances and I thought they might even have a chance of getting something there. I was kind of reluctant to back just a straight Brentford when I had, a, you know, Burnley, I yeah. think at some point they're going to win a match so I was concerned and yeah it makes this game pretty difficult to call I mean I it's kind of two poor teams um I think Bournemouth might just get their first win of the season I mean 
Burnley, yeah, they've beaten Luton, but they haven't had you know haven't had particularly good results this term. I think Bournemouth maybe just to win straight um, is tempting. Two point one five. That's not bad for a team at home against one of the really you know real strugglers Burnley at the moment. So maybe that's the yeah. best route to straight Bournemouth win. Um, I'm reluctant to get involved in the goals because Burnley often play good football and don't score. Uh, Bournemouth similar. They play quite an open game. So I mean, you think there might be a goal for both teams, but I'm just going to stay away and go straight Bournemouth win. Um, if I bet it all on this game, I'm, it's the sort of one I'm a bit reluctant to uh, maybe put too much money on because yeah. I just can't not sure, quite sure how it'll play out. Uh, let's move on over to Arsenal Sheffield. I think lots of conversations around the goalkeeper situation at Arsenal, but I mean they'll be pretty happy with the result that they had in Champions League beating Sevilla the way they did. Um, yeah, I mean, look, Sheffield United, bottom of the group, bottom of the table, they haven't won a single game. I mean, you'd back Arsenal to, to win this one. But mm. it's trying to find value in this game, which is going to be quite tough. Because, I mean, you know I'm the anytime goal scorer market. That's where I go. But the likes of Saka haven't been showing up. And it's been pretty much between Martinelli and Trossard. So that's quite a big risk to take. But I think the one that I'm leaning over is perhaps jumping into Arsenal to win by zero. I think that's the best one at 1.76. Yeah. Um, or maybe just tapping into yeah. team goals. I can see Arsenal scoring three goals. So, I mean, that's at 1.57 over 2.5. Mm. Yeah, um, it's not an easy one to get value because Arsenal are such overwhelming favourites. Uh, they should win this game by a good few goals. You know, Sheffield yeah. United have lost eight of their last nine Premier League games. They've conceded at least two goals in their last eight games. Um, and most of the games have had over 2.5 goals, um, seven of their last eight. So, yeah, there should be goals, yeah. Probably like an Arsenal 3-0 or something along those lines. Um, the scoring market is a good one to look at because, yeah, Gabriel Jesus is injured. So maybe Eddie Nketiah will lead the line. Um, that's a possibility. There are other options. Of course, he could play someone like Havertz or Trossard as a false nine. So, I mean, I'd want to check the lineup before I back Nketiah. But, you know, whenever he comes in, he's, he's pretty keen, to, eager to impress and to take his chances yeah. on the pitch. Um, so, you know, even when he comes in as a sub, you see he's like always trying to get shots away. So I think he's a good player to back four goals. You know, Saka's the two quiet games. Um, the Chelsea game, he didn't really look fit. So Mark Correa kind of like just got very tight to him and made his life difficult. So I'd probably stay away from him, even though he's on penalties. Um, maybe he's not yeah. going to play another, he might not play a full game, maybe an hour or something, because you don't want to overload him just after an injury. So, yeah, I think that's probably the way I'll go. I can't see, and I can't just can't share with United getting anything in the game. Um, look, they've made life difficult for City and for Spurs, and they've not been a million miles away from a draw in those games. Yeah. But, yeah, it's hard to keep it up sometimes. You know, after some of those games, after... The, uh, it was the um, the City game, I think. They got thrashed by Newcastle 8-0 because it's hard to kind of like give everything just to not get thrashed every week, you know, and you play a slightly more open exactly. game. Um, eventually, within games, you open up and teams beat you. So, they've leaked 24 goals in nine games. I'd be surprised if they leak any fewer than three. So, yeah, I'd look at Arsenal maybe on the handicaps as well. Um, Arsenal minus two. In other words, to win by three goals or more. Uh, it's 2.05. It's just over even money. Um, that's probably also yeah. what I'd look at. Or I'd go, yeah, Arsenal and Nketi to score or whatever. Something like that to, to eke out value. But it's, yeah, looks this looks like a one-sided game in, in our thing. And then, of course, we move on over to Wolves, Newcastle. They're going to be wrapping up Saturday. Uh, look, I mean, I've been judging things off PS, uh, FPL stats. So Pedro Neto, he's definitely been looking good this season. Chipping in with the assist. Newcastle, though. Not a great week in the Champions League. So, I mean, they're going to be focused on at least bouncing back so they can do something in the league. I think both teams to score is where I, I'm leaning towards. I can't pick a winner. Yeah, I mean, I've been quite impressed by Wolves this season, even from the first day. I keep saying that United game, they were just so impressive with um, just a few days of preparation. And you see those results yeah. starting to come a bit now. That Man City game, they... They conceded a lot of shots, but not really good chances. And they even conceded, after conceding an equaliser, they still got the winner. Um, a draw against Villa is yeah, it's a good, really good result considering Villa's form right now. Um, and they led in that game. And then last time out going to Bournemouth and winning uh, with a late goal and against ten men, sure. But 
I think Gary Neal's, um, he's definitely, his stock's definitely risen uh, after his appearance on TV this week. I saw a lot of people saying, oh, he speaks really well and he might be a future England manager. Um, yeah, and he's just, he's, he, you know, he sort of like um, showed some training ground footage and all sort that of type of stuff, you know, from their sessions. So, yeah, it was a, I think a few people are more aware of him now. Um, and, I mean, Newcastle played Champions League football. They lost at home to Dortmund, but have crashed out back down to earth there. I think people, I think people kind of all expected them to win that game, having yeah. beaten PSG. But Dortmund a bit forewarned, you know, about what Newcastle can do um, and didn't make the same mistake. So, they want to bounce back. Of course, there's no um, Sandro Tonali with his suspension, uh, 10-month ban. Um, Joe Willock's back in training, maybe not ready to play more than a few minutes, but it's probably like for like. Like It's a good, <clears throat> it's a good internal replacement. So, yeah, tough one. You, you, you think both teams score. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it's a tough one because Wolves generally don't score many goals, and Newcastle do have a good defence. They've had a fair few clean sheets of late. Um, so I'm a bit reluctant on that. And the odds aren't amazing on Newcastle, 1.83. Uh, away from home, it's kind of similar to what you can get for Spurs to win at Palace and, and Spurs at top. So I'm a bit reluctant in this game as well. I think there's a chance Newcastle yeah. will draw. Um, so on the betting front, I mean, I might go double chance and then goals. So if I go double chance and I want Newcastle or draw, because I think they maybe avoid defeat. And then something like maybe under 3.5, that's 1.8. So I think that's maybe the sort of safer bet I'd probably look at. Um, because I'm not 100% sure they'll win this game. They, yeah. they probably will bounce back and win it always if I had to really decide on a winner one way or another, but I'm a bit scared. So, yeah, double chance and goals market for me. And then, of course, we move on over to Sunday, where we see West Ham. They'll be taking on Everton. Now, as we're currently recording this, West Ham are losing to Olympiacos 2-0. Um, I think that's definitely going to have an effect going into this weekend if it stays at what it is. But, I mean, the Everton side, that's struggling. They're trying their best. I think there are some glimpses, you know, in certain moments. You see Beto, he's stepping up. I think Decore is such a player. Uh, Onana looked good in that against Liverpool. So there are some players within that team. I think they're going to miss Ashley Young because of the red card. But besides that, I think they could do something. But then again, West Ham have been okay this season. Yeah, this is not an easy game because obviously it's more against his former club. And Everton, it's hard to judge them too much. You know, they last week came quite close to getting a, a draw at, um, at Anfield. Um, they, well, they, it was no no after 74 minutes. That they went a million miles away from eking out a point considering they played half of that, that 74 minutes with, with 10 men. Um so, yeah, there's obviously a few substandard players there, you know, Michael Keane and these guys, but they, yeah, they look a lot better now with, you mentioned Beto and Covid lewin fit to, you know, to start, um, then Juma on the bench and, you know, they've got a few more options now. Um, this world looks better, but, and of course you mentioned West Ham playing in the Europa League. I mean, that's, that's a fatigue element. You know, they, Olympiacos obviously they have to travel to, you know, to play in Greece and then they have to travel back and they sort of yeah. back on, yeah, back on Friday, and then they got this game early on Sunday. Um, they're, they're hitting a lot of players, but I mean, still, you know, Ward Prowse, Suchik starting, um, yeah, a few others, Emerson who would probably play that game. And then on the bench, a lot, a lot of the main, the big hitters, so they all traveled, you know, Antonio's, Bowen, Zoomers, etc. So, Paqueta. So, it's not like they have had a full rest and they're sitting in London. Um, and they'll probably come on in the, in the yeah. second half of this game, yeah. So, the fatigue issue is a concern slightly. Um, and West Ham, they've had some weird games this season. You know, thrashed last time at Aston Villa, um, which I was disappointed by because Villa, you know, had won to what, 10 or 11 home games in a row. I thought West Ham would be a little bit more sort of prepared for that. Um, and if you look how the game went, I mean, yeah, Villa had 15 shots, almost two XG, created quite a few chances. Um, and then when they get ahead of, they've got that speed to actually kill teams on the break of Watkins and, and Bailey and Diaby and stuff. So they're not disappointed in West Ham. Um, but this is a nice game for them to get back to winning ways. You know, I think um, if it's in, in away games, um, I'm not super convinced by them. So maybe I'd go for West Ham to win. But also a difficult game. I, have, I feel like there's a lot of caveats, you know, with, um, with West Ham being in, involved in Thursday action. So I'm probably going to say I'd stay away for safety. Um, or go for West Ham on like a double chance and add some goals in there 
just in case they slip up and draw. Um, I think that's I'm more comfortable with doing that. And then we move on over to Aston Villa, who's going to be taking on Luton. As we're recording, Villa are currently playing the Europa Conference. They are leading 2-0. Now they'll be going back home uh, to host Luton. Uh, look, I'm not going to hesitate. I think Villa's home form has been incredible. I think we can expect possibly three or four goals coming from Villa and any time goal scorer on Ollie Watkins if he remains fit after tonight's match. Mm. Yeah, I think that's worthwhile. I mean, yeah, it's 11 home league wins in a row for Villa. An extraordinary record. And then, you know, at some point that will end, but I think they'll be delighted to see Luton up ahead because there's a very good chance that they'll win that match. Um, of course, they're playing, you know, in um, in the Netherlands on Thursday, which, yeah, can cause some, it can cause a few issues. Um, but they, I think they've been handling it pretty well. You know, Emery's so experienced at playing Thursday night football with Sevilla and Federal that he's yeah. good, you know, getting his players recovered. And he plays, he doesn't play very weak teams in the Conference League either. You know, he plays often plays his, his, his pretty mm-hmm. strong team. Then they all kind of recover together, and then they all play Sunday instead of changing everyone, trying to you know, keep your starters, you know, kind of doing conditioning work on the training pitch and stuff. They all play together, they all cover together. Um, they've they rested a few tonight, but they've got a pretty strong team. Maybe six or seven starters for the weekend or starting this one. Um, yeah, so it's really hard to see past anything than a, a Villa win. And I mean, the odds reflect that 1.28 is just, yeah, it's, it's extraordinarily low. Um, people have wised up to this long streak of wins now. So you have to back kind of Villa to win on the handicap. Um, I mean, Villa on minus one. So in other words, a two goal margin win is 1.74. That's kind of like reasonable for a home win for Villa. Um, you have, kind yeah. of just have to hope that they can win by a decent margin. Or going for Watkins is just a, a better bet, you know. Um, you know, he's, okay, he's 1.62 anytime scorer, but if you want to back him to score two or more goals, which I mean, he's scored a, quite a few braces and hat-tricks in the last 18 months. It's 3.95 for him to score two or more goals. Um, yeah. So if he's starting and he's definitely not injured or anything tonight, yeah, that looks tempting to me. I just can't see Luton getting anything. Um, I mean, they're 10 to 1, they, or they're 10 to for, for this game, 10.00. So yeah, I, mean, it's just, I can't see it. Um, it's gonna, I'm sure it's going to be a better win. But at some point, they will slip up at home. So maybe it'll be this game and it'll ruin everyone's tickets and maybe I'm going to stay away from tickets and just back them in a, in a single bet instead of the Watkins bet um, yeah yeah they've got um, Fulham at home next so they they might continue this run for a while before they host City in December who knows and then of course Brighton they'll be playing host to Fulham Fulham will need to bounce back after their result against Spurs Brighton currently playing in uh, the Europa League uh, if I'm not mistaken, a little bit later on tonight. Yeah, I think uh, Brighton's such a weird one because they can just, out of nowhere, get results and do well and then drop points. I think they did well against City, if I'm being completely honest. I think they'll be happy at the fact that Ansu Fati got into the score sheet. I think you've seen a lot of good talents come through. Um, and there's just a well of individuals coming through. Uh, and the squad is staying fresh and new. So it's quite hard to set up against them. Um, so, yeah, it's going to mm. be interesting to see how this game goes. Yeah, Brighton have had a dip of late. Um, but it's 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 largely down to injuries and, and the scheduling because they're not, they're not experienced at playing two games a week. Um, you know, even I saw Joel Faltman speaking before the, the IX game tonight, you know, former IX player, that um, <clears throat> even he'd underestimated a bit how much recovery it would take to play Thursday, Sunday. You know, the Champions League, you do play Wednesday, Saturday, but you often play Tuesday, Sunday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Sunday. So, you, you know, it's not always this very quick turnover, a turnaround time like it is in the yeah. when you're a league team. But, I mean, Brighton's injuries are the biggest, probably the biggest reason, you know. Um, Estupinan's um, absent at left-back. Tariq Lamptey was deputising. He's injured. Solly March was played there against Man City and the previous game. He got injured in that game. I mean, maybe James Milner was going to play there tonight. Um, they're going to have to have a, a, someone really out of position. Um, so that's that. You know, that's quite a big, I think, a big reason for their their drop in form. And I mean, yeah, against City in the second half, they played really well. In the first half, they had one shot. Yeah. City kind of controlled that. But then in the second half, they they rallied really nicely, pulled a goal back, and made life quite difficult um, for Guardiola's team. As maybe they switched their attention slightly to the Champions League. But 
still um, they still have that you know these great attacking options. You know, Ferguson and and Fatty came off the bench for the last game. Even though Warwick got injured, they've you know they still got Matoma um, and um, and Dringer, so they got a nice attack. Um, so I think yeah, they they will they, they will bounce back to get a win at some point um, in the next game or two. But I do worry tonight's Ajax. It's going to be a really emotional game. They need to win, and that might take a lot out of them. So I think the Fulham game might be similar for them to the Bournemouth game they had a couple of weeks back. They were, yeah. um, I think, trailing at halftime and had scored in the second half with some big hitters coming on. So I'm inclined to think that could be something similar in this game. Um, yeah, Fulham, but up and down and doing some weird things in their team selection, you know, dropping Iwobi and bringing him on at halftime against Spurs. Um, yeah, they, you know, they're slightly weird. And Calvin Bassey playing as a right centre back as a left footer <clears throat> looked really uncomfortable. I mean, he looks uncomfortable yeah, on his natural sure. side. So if he plays again, I'm probably worried. So yeah, I'd go for probably for Brighton to win, but the straight odds at 1.55 are, are not that great. But you can pretty much trust them to concede every game. So if you go Brighton win and both teams to score, you get 2.75. Um, I think I'd be more inclined to go for that. I think they might fall behind, maybe you know bring on some good subs and eventually turn, you know turn around the game into a win. Yeah. That's probably how I'm going to go for this one. And then, of course, Liverpool, they'll be taking on Forrest at Anfield. Um, I mean, look, it, it was good display from Liverpool in the Merseyside derby. You know, Klopp used to complain about those early kickoffs all the time. Um, they've had mm-hmm. the most. But, I mean, this game, taking on a Forrest, that seems pretty good. I mean, Anthony Ilanga has been contributing to the team. Uh, we all know Iowa needs the threat up front. Morgan Gibbs White, of course, with his creativity, is always a threat. Uh, but Anfield, Liverpool, I think they will do well. I'm leaning over in, into going uh, Liverpool uh, to win by zero. That's at 2.35. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Um, look, with Liverpool to zero, I have a theory that when Van Dijk and Konate play together, and I mean, it might be backed up by the data, but I haven't actually you know, done a you know, deep dive into the stats. But when they play together, the yeah. team is way more solid. As uh, opposed That's to Matip, who's a bit injury prone, and Gomez and Kwanzaa and all these guys. So, if I see Van Dijk and Konate, then I'll be willing to back a win to know. If I, if one of them is left out because they play on Thursday tonight against Toulouse, then um, yeah, then I would probably go for them maybe to concede a goal. I mean, Forrest yeah. um, would be gutted not to have won last week. They were two 0 up against Luton. You know, Chris Wood making a two 0 after seventy six minutes and then conceding twice, um, the eighty third and the ninetieth minute. Um, <clears throat> yeah, bad two points drop there. Um, and even some other games this season, you know, they've they've drawn four of their last five, as Guy settled in since they won the Stamford Bridge. Um, so four points from the last five games with with, with one defeat. Um, I don't think they will get anything at Anfield. I think Liverpool are playing well. They've got yeah. all this firepower. And the Merseyside derby, they got through despite all the South American players, um, you know, coming back a bit fatigued. They still managed to do the job. So... Yeah, Liverpool win, and I'd maybe go both teams to score if, as I say, if it's not Van Dijk and then Liverpool to win to nil if I see they are both starting. But then I'm going to have to wait to, yeah, I'm going to have to wait until, what, uh, three o'clock on Sunday to actually decide on that. Um, so, yeah, I'm probably going to do that. I'll, wait, I'll rather wait to see the lineup and then decide on that front. Or I just go Liverpool and, and put Salah in the goals, you know, in the goal stakes. He's been scoring a lot of goals lately. A lot of assists. Yeah. Um, you could easily back Salah to score more than one goal in this game. Um, to score two or more, especially with penalties. Um, Forest have some, you know, some error-prone defenders. Uh, I could see that Salah scoring two or more goals, and I mean, the odds on, the, on that is always really good. And they tend to score a lot of breaks. I mean, it's four point five for Salah to score two or more goals. If I went for him and maybe <clears throat> one other player to score breaks this weekend, if it yeah. came through, you're going to get massive returns. So, yeah, I'd consider that. Um, that's probably how I'm looking for this game. And then, of course, the last one, the big one. It's all happening. Manchester Derby is coming our way at OT. Of course, City, dominant display in the Champions League, getting all three points. Manchester United, they got over the line against Sheffield and then managed to collect three points in the Champions League. I think, yeah, I think if you're a United fan, you're going to be very nervous going into this one. Mm-hmm. Um, Grant, I think, personally, I just have a feeling that this is, everyone's been talking about Haaland not scoring in the league. 
I think this is the game where he comes back to being the Holland we saw last season. Mm. Yeah, I mean, United have been weird of late. They've, they've kind of eked out three, no, uh, three wins in a row, sorry, um, against Brentford where they needed two late, late goals and, a, and a, for my opinion, a goalkeeping error on the second one. They won at Sheffield United. They yeah. played okay and again, a great call up chances. Um, they got that goal, that winner from Dallas was coming for quite a while. Um, but in midweek, you know, needing a, a last gasp penalty save, um, otherwise they would have been in just disastrous situation in their group. Um, yeah, they're slowly maybe rebuilding confidence by getting results, but the performances aren't exactly uh, getting a whole lot better. I mean, Copenhagen, pretty much similar and open play expected goals in the week, <clears throat> obviously plus the penalty added, yeah. more shots in United as well. Um, Maguire scoring the goal there. He's had a couple of good performances in a row. Um, and now he comes up against Haaland. So I'm, I'm, I mean, I think he'll start again, you know, um, alongside Varane, the way he's playing at the moment. Um, yeah. And that's going to be really fascinating to see if, if you know, if you're right, if he just gets absolutely destroyed by Haaland and finds himself back in this, the, on the bench or in the stands for coming games. I mean, if he can have a good game, maybe he can solidify his starting place for quite a few months because Martinez has got a long injury. Um, but this game, Guardiola side have the upper hand. They've won four of the last five derbies. Um, yeah. I think they're playing a lot better. Yeah, they had some of that dip, sort of dip before the international break, but they've looked back at it since the <clears throat> since the FIFA break. You know, especially the first half against Brighton, only allowing one shot, and then the Young Boys game where they won three one with twenty six shots, four point two five xg. I mean, that was a caning. Um, I know it was nice and lucrative for you with on the you know on the in running betting front. Um, yeah, it was a smart bet. I think you were what, win three goals in the second half of City. It was your prediction? Three I think, goals or in your, the second half. Bet yeah. that you put. Yeah, it's really smart. You know, um, smart bets, good return. I look. I think City will win the game. Um, United just aren't impressive, even though they they've kind of they've won a few games lately. Um, they've lost two of their last three home games in the league, and City. Yeah, I mean, Holland scored now three goals in his last two games since the FIFA break. Um, and he was in a, what, a three or four goal drop before that. I think he's he's over that and he probably will put a couple of goals away. I mean, to score, him to score two more goals is 4.65. So if you've got Haaland and Salah yeah. to both score braces this week, on Sunday you can you can um, see if at least if Salah's starting before you go for that because that game's at, um, at, two, at 3 o'clock and United at 4.30. You can see if Salah's playing, Haaland will probably play. You back those two to get <clears throat> braces, get huge odds. So that's probably how I'm going to... Um, I'm going to look at this game, maybe Haaland's um, a brace, because the City city straight win odds are 1.66, which is, I mean, it's a derby. That's, that's, those are pretty weak odds. Um, I don't think it's yeah. worth it, honestly. City to win by two goals at 2.8. You know, um, more than one goal is 2.8. I think that's more tempting for me. Um, I could see, you know, Foden and Haaland got hat-tricks in this game. Was it last season? So, yeah, City win. I just can't see United the way they're playing at the moment. Um getting a victory, but they they played really badly going to derbies before and managed to eke out results, especially under Solskjaer. Yeah. So it's not impossible, but I don't see it this time around. Well, there we go. That's our last game for this game week. Let us know how you'll be betting by simply tagging us at Bedco. So I've been Mitch. That's been Grant. We'll see you again. Peace.